training video, I'm going to share with you Jack Welch's tips on checking the finance and business health of a business in 15 minutes or less. So first off, who is Jack Welch? Well, he was the chairman and CEO of General Electric between 1981 and 2001. During his tenure, the company's value rose 4,000%. In fact, it was kind of screwing over and dying when he first came on board. His net worth is estimated at $720 million. And Warren Buffett said that no other manage book, management book will ever be needed on his on the book he wrote called Winning and he he also said that Jack Welch was the Tiger Woods of management for his book straight from the gut now the information in this book is distilled from another book he wrote called the mini MBA or real life MBA which was co-written with his wife Susie Welch. Anyhow, you're going to learn some fantastic stuff in here about how you can become a master of figuring out the business health of your business and using that to find out what's going wrong and how to fix it. So, Jack says a business can't be boiled down to one ratio, but there are three indicators that are most helpful. And those are employee engagement, customer satisfaction, and cash flow. Cash flow can be broken out into operating, investing, and financing. So, as you can tell, these are more generalized principles. You may have been expecting something more technical or metric-driven, like return on ad spend or EBITDA, earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, and uh, stuff like that. And I think this really just speaks to how, you know, this giant, this titan of business has realized that ultimately it comes to simple, measurable factors that we can all define and understand. Nothing crazy, complicated, and technical. Employee engagement. Well, if employees don't really care about working here, that's going to be an issue. The better engaged and the more an employee loves their job, the more they're gonna treat a customer better, which means more money in your pocket. Customer satisfaction, even more critical and probably one of the pivotal points of any business. The more you can delight your customer, the longer they'll stay with you, the more money they'll spend, and maybe even the more frequently they'll come back to buy from you. And then cash flow, now this obviously requires a bit of accounting, 101 so it matters if you have, have taken accounting or not but it breaks it down into operating investing and financing on a higher level operating is what uh, money you're putting in to a business for it to operate lights employee equipment salaries investing is stuff that you invest in usually for the long term maybe this is uh, equity that your investors have put in or maybe it's your own equity into long-term parts of your business or acquisitions and so forth financing uh, similar type of thing so breaking it down even further how can you improve and measure employee engagement uh, measure it at least once a year with anonymous surveys and make sure your surveys don't go into tiny details like what what do you think of the cafeteria trays? Small stuff like that don't matter. What you really care want to care about is, well, do they care about the work? Do they like staying here? Stuff that they that will get them to enjoy their work and want to stay at the company. So higher level stuff is what you want to look at most, and ask questions that will uh, energize employees so that they believe in the mission and understand how to achieve it. So a good question, for example, might be, do you understand the mission of our company? Or are you aligned with the mission of our company? So what about customer satisfaction? How can you improve this and increase it? Now, Mr. Welch recommends the Net Promoter Score and uh, keep in mind, I think um, I would 
preface this by saying that this is for a massive company. He he runs. He's only been at GE really, General Electric, and so these massive companies have incredibly large budgets. Like each contract may even run for multi millions. So when he suggests a net promoter score, it works fantastic for something like that, where you know you're looking at this and you're seeing how likely. Uh, you, you run that net promoter score survey and you get a sample size from these select people on how likely they're going to promote your company or share it with others. Uh, now, Jack says that this is applicable to, like, all his advice in the book is applicable to all companies. Who knows how true that is, but we do know that, um, you know, net promoter score or some variation of this may be useful as a survey tool to figure out how you can improve customer satisfaction. He also, along that vein, suggests site visits with unsatisfied clients or customers. Um, so you can do this too, I think, even for a different type of business, a smaller business or a e-commerce business. You can do this. You can talk to customers that are unsatisfied, figure out what's going wrong. And then the third thing is improving employee engagement. Improving customer satisfaction is a double whammy because th the more you can improve this, the more you can improve employee engagement and vice versa. So it's kind of like a double doozy, double whammy, great place to start because of its cornerstone impact. Uh, so they go hand in hand. Now, the third one is cash flow, and what you need to know about this is that it does not lie. Jack says that many managers prefer cash flow to looking at the in net income statement because the net income statement has a bunch of assumptions and judgments inside of them. Cash flow gives a sense of maneuverability, and it's hard to fudge the cash flow. It's real clear where the money is going to waste and where the money is being used effectively. Now, okay, we've got those three variables, those three things that we've already mentioned, but let's say you want to dive a bit deeper, you want to get into more numbers. Jack loves variance analysis. He says that this is the key thing that you should look at if you're not a huge CFO guy and you don't have all the technical stuff and you're not familiar with all the terminolo terminology and jargon that they throw around in business meetings. Quite frankly, he says that most of that jargon and complicated stuff is unnecessary. So what is variance analysis? Well, it's about comparing numbers. He says numbers aren't meant to be calculated, they're meant to be compared. It's about finding out the reality behind your business. It's about digging into those numbers and doing your detective work and finding the difference between result, the results and your plan. What happened? Why did it go wrong and why did it go right? And then doubling down on that or figuring out how you can do things differently. So over the decades he's been in business and from the decades of other people he's seen in business, he's found that variances have proven their worth. Now there's five variances he thinks that are have proven their worth most. So if you must go into more technical advanced uh, metrics, here are the uh, metrics you should look at. Uh, the first one is sales. So how much are you selling? Self-explanatory. The second is similar net income. How much do you earn after you take off for expenses based off your sales? Uh, that said, he says that these are both indicators of the past. By the time you see these numbers, they tell a story of the past and there's not as much you can do in the present to fix them. They just have already shown and sometimes it's too late that you've screwed over uh, or you're you're doing poorly. The next one would be orders which would be similar to sales. This is he he describes it as orders because again he works in this big business with millions of uh, dollars being thrown around and business to business uh, however you might replace that word with like uh, customer orders or customer checkouts if you're in e-commerce and then the fourth one would be salaried employment uh, so you know how many people are you paying and how much are you paying them if you're 
paying five hundred thousand dollars a year because you're paying ten employees an average of fifty k per year, and then that jumps up to a million a year. Well, that's a huge indicator of where your future growth is, and how you're going to uh, plan for that. Uh, Mr. Welch says that uh, both of these are great indicators for where you're going to be spending a lot of money and it's a great way to plan for departmental growth so if the marketing team is growing rapidly based off salaried employment but the HR team is not and the sales team is not well you gotta pl plan for that what are you gonna do in terms of infrastructure in terms of office space to account for that do you need as much growth in the uh, marketing department um, and then same thing with orders like if a lot of your watches are selling well if you but your uh, ties are not selling well then you gotta adjust the factory uh, demands to account for all those extra sh future shipments the fifth variance that you might want to look at is operating margin rate so this one is more of a investopedia slightly advanced term um, the rate at which your your operating costs are are eating up uh, money, and how much are you making off of that really, based in your operating day day to day? Um, is that margin going up or down? Then there's working capital turnover ratio. Well, how much usable capital are you using up on a daily, weekly, monthly basis? Is that being used up quicker? Is it using it up smaller? Is, is there more that's being turned over at a quicker rate? These are great indicators for company efficiency. Um, he suggests looking at these quarterly. Uh, so yeah, even if you're getting a lot of sales, if your margin's going down, then you're making less of a fraction off of each sale. And you know, even if you're putting in more work and getting more sales, then you can still end up with less profit, which sucks. Same thing with working capital turnover ratio. You're turning over stuff a lot quicker, but um, is it translating into um, efficiency? If not, investigate what's going on here. Is are there unnecessary costs that are eating up your your profit? Maybe it's your factory and your factory's added a bunch of unnecessary systems or uh, just unnecessary salaried people that you need to fire finally there's return on investment and market share as the two final variances you may want to look at now these are great for long-term analysis and they really give you a sense of how well you're doing overall in the long term if you're occupying more market share that means that you know customers are aware of you more which is fantastic uh, and then return on investment self-explanatory so to be a master of this you have to push and probe um, Jack gives a f couple examples in the book he poses a uh, example of Mary so Mary's been promoted to the head of a perfume division at this massive company because she's great at pushing and probing she investigates the income statement and f discovers that marketing costs have been climbing 5% year over year for the last three years while revenues have been flat for those three years. What's more is that the plan is for marketing to continue climbing 5% year over year for the next three to five years. So she, does, she doesn't like this so she drills down and identifies the uh, seasoned manager who is uh, running that marketing uh, department and she talks with the manager and they investigate and if it turns out there's a social media campaign that's the culprit and Mary asks well where's the return on investment on this what's going on and the manager uh, admits that this campaign has been going for 18 months and they've been hoping for a return on investment but they still haven't seen one and it's been eating up costs and they keep running it because Social media is the next hot thing, but they're not seeing the results of it. And so Mary turns it off. So this is an example of pushing and probing, and she has effectively identified and eliminated an excessive cost. Next, she looks at the SGNA 
expenses in the net income statement that's uh, selling general and administrative expenses and she asks why we need eight people in HR apparently there's eight employees in human resources she pushes and probes and she ends up having a tough conversation with the head of HR and turns out they've been hiring much more than they needed to and it's caused this massive cost that's unnecessary so she has had she had to have a uncomfortable conversation that was argumentative and and they had a strong intelligent but calm discussion about how how sometimes it's better to hire better but less people so Jack Welch says that such conversations are necessary sometimes they're argumentative and uncomfortable but truth seeking is rarely a day by the beach it's definitely okay to have these situations and you need them to succeed in summary you don't need to become a math whiz or keep up with the latest acronyms to be a good CFO you need to be relentlessly curious about the truth and what variances tell you about one how the business is doing two where it's going three why and four how fast so that's it uh, hopefully you found use in this uh, video training and you can kinda see how ultimately it's about pushing and probing and looking at the variances over time to really figure out are we trending at an acceptable speed towards where we're going and if not why not if we are how can we do better and by being assertive and having those tough conversations where sometimes people end up disliking you or uh, disagreeing with you and, and investigating those numbers and being true and honest to them and fixing them that's how you can beat your competition thanks for watching